This week on Theater Talk. We used to work together. I don't care. <laughs> I'm we wrote 81. Every... I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Not everything. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. If you could sum up your new show in one word, what would it be? Topical. Nostalgic. Honest. Funkified. Introspective. Almonds. Almonds? Ha-cha-cha. That's not a word. Ha-cha-cha. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm the show's producer, Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. So, Michael, tonight we have a couple who embody the epitome of teamwork. And it's not us. Oh, yes, and they have amazing chemistry. They are among the great comedy teams of all time. We have Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy, Lucy and Desi, and Stiller and Mira. You've left out Leopold and Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was waiting for him to, 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 to hit. Very anyway. good, Jerry. All right, okay. We, we are delighted tonight to be joined by Ann Mira. Jerry Stiller, who have been working and married together for how many years now? We're married 57 years. And working together, fifty-seven uh, years. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no. We started. Uh, we started getting oh. together when uh, <clears throat> one day we decided that we. I'm really gonna start to snore on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I feel but a I lot wanna... of Z's coming <laughs> out. No, no. But I, I'm curious how where you met. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> I am. Met on a subway station. Believe it or not, I was no. taking a, a ballet lesson. One. Which is already ridiculous, but yeah. he was. We met in a uh, uh, a girl and a, a, a lovely actress that he had formerly been having a, a sex with. <laughs> we met in a uh, agent's office. And you know, they were doing what they call a cattle call, for, uh, audition for summer stock, and this uh, young woman that I was trying to do this act with, and you can take it any way you want, uh, she, wanted, or she really wanted to get rid of me. And uh, here in this office was this lovely, beautiful, uh, young, childlike actress named her friend Ann Mira. Ann Mira, I'd like you to meet Jerry Stiller. Two minutes later, Ann goes in to see the agent. A uh, second later, she comes out screaming and crying. He said, what happened? He chased me all around the room. And I went in next, Jerry Stiller, and I knew the guy. I was joked with him. I says, uh, why'd you chase that girl around the room? He says, because I like her. Now it's your turn. <laughs> so uh, Jerry exaggerates. Anyway, exaggerates so her. we came. I came out, and she was still there. Humorous and then this, uh, uh, this friend of, said, why don't you take this girl out for coffee? We went and had coffee across the street at a cafeteria. You're liking it so far, Susan? <laughs> I had no money for coffee even. <laughs> oh, it's a sad story. And then we're going to hear about how it was on the Lower so East anyway, Side. Oh, God. Anyway, the, the, the end of this uh, beginning, uh, let's put it that way, is that uh, she did not have a sandwich, soup, or any dessert. I just had coffee. Yeah. And I, I didn't ask him to pay for my coffee, and this impressed him. But I did say, while we're here, take a couple of spoons. <laughs> so, because my roommate and I lived in the village and we needed spoons. Yeah. Like Mama so Rose. I start, she said, yeah. stick them in your pocket and let's get the hell out of here. That was the line. That, stick that's, them in your pocket. And I said, this is for me. <laughs> the, you don't know where this one's going to go. You know, <laughs> actors in New York. Were, but the chemistry was there, I mean, really right who off the knows, Who knows? Who yeah. knows? I let him sleep overnight. The chemistry happened about two months ago. When did you then think... <laughs> <laughs> But what did you then think, you know, actually, we could work together, not just date. That was from could... Jerry. Jerry always thought I was funny at inappropriate moments. but Because he... <laughs> you weren't really a comedian. You were an actress, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you you were... bet. I was serious. Yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was Kim Stanley, Maureen Stapleton. Nobody knew it, but I was them. I, yeah. You know, I, I could break your heart. I never thought of myself as a comedian. I grew to respect it, though, later. Jerry got me into the Compass Players in St. Louis. Mm. In fact, he got me into a lot of jobs. Before the Compass Players, he got me into Joe Papp, in Shakespeare in Central Park. I got her into. I got a lot of so, jobs. So were the Compass Players in the, connected with Second City, subsequently? They were. Yes. They were the St. Louis, uh, they, there was they were Alan Arkin, and Jerry, yeah, me, yeah. and a very talented woman named Nancy Ponder, and David Shepard was sure, the director. I know David yeah. Shepherd, yeah. What happened was that Mike and Elaine and Shelley 
blew away from the compass players. They needed right. two replacements, and they got Ann and myself. And they needed another person for Shelley Berman. They got Alan Arkin. Mm. Mm. And suddenly, the three of us plus Nancy Ponder, a wonderful actress, were in St. Louis learning how to take suggestions from the audience. Yes. <laughs> and the only person who was willing to stand up in front of the group, these four people, and take suggestions, because we were all like, ooh, what's suggestion, was Ann Mira. And once they started talking to her, they didn't want to hear about an improvisation. They just want to chat with my You're wife. Very Ann. kind. Again, he exaggerates. Well, but that's, that was There's when no I knew. There's no way you can check on this story. <laughs> but Absolutely. that's when you knew she had the. Oh, yeah. I said, this one is funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you, you put yourself, uh, when did your act come together? Your when uh, the uh, the thing we were doing with Alan and Nancy and David Shepard broke up, we uh, he always wanted to work on an act, and it was Well, we actually, had to work on an act because we were married, and they yeah. were sending us, sending us off in different directions. <laughs> so it, we said, let's keep this thing together by working on the stuff that we learned at the Compass Players. I mm. can't tell you how much I hate the story of our lives. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I well, can't well, tell you how much I hate it. I do want to ask you, though, because I've always been fascinated by... Uh, Ed Sullivan and the power that Ed Sullivan Have you? had. And you guys, of course, famously appeared on Ed Sullivan many times. Yes. And in many ways, probably those appearances are really what established you. Now, I know we're on TV, and I'm not going to say any bad words. He's been dead a long time, darling. <laughs> he scared the detritus out of me. How's <laughs> really? that? Really? He really scared Why? me. Why? Because he was, you know, Ed Sullivan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I have a different take on Ed Sullivan. You worshipped him because he was Irish, and you, you. No, don't tell how I worshipped him. Are, you're I'll right. Tell my, I'm wrong. That's Ed all. Sullivan liked two people who were of the different backgrounds because he himself, this we figured out, he too was married to a Jewish lady. So when we came in and started do this uh, particular sketch after being on for five, six times about uh, the Jewish Hershey boy. Hershey and Mary Elizabeth Doyle. <laughs> they meet through a computer. They're ideally matched. And this yeah. established the uh, who we were. For the first time, people were now calling us Schiller and Myra, Mara and Shella, whatever. <laughs> they knew it was Jerry I'm and Anne. And too. he he <laughs> fell in love with us. His tears coming out after we did this wonderful moment. And he said later to me, he says, we got wonderful comments on this show. I said, who, from the Jewish or the Irish? He said, from the Lutherans. They all want kinescopes. <laughs> and so that was the way he, uh, he worked. But he also had a part of him that really uh, was a groundbreaker. He was the first one to put the Supremes on the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Which yeah. really, uh, sure. uh, so he went in so many different directions. What was it like to go on that show? Because I've, I've read about it and heard that you know he ran everything with an iron fist. When you were summoned yeah. by Ed Sullivan, that was... He's terrifying. Well, if you were asked to be on, you'd hear through your agent, of course, and it, it was a thrill, but it was scary because you knew. You had to go there in the afternoon and you'd do what you were going to do that night mm. because it was live, mm -hmm. and it, it, was, it was very frightening to and me. And he was always there or hovering around he watching He was you. there. It was his show. He was minding the store, yeah. and there were international favorites, you know, Vomiting in the wings. <laughs> he actually, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. vomiting in the oh, wings. Oh, oh, kiss me good night, Eddie. <laughs> you were going to say, Jerry? I was going to say, he, he, he owned the hour. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, so he had all those commercials that uh, had to come in because th th he was, that's the way he uh, made the uh, show work for him. And so he knew exactly how long a dance act, uh, singing act, but he never knew how long a comedy act would work. So. You always see him talking like this, ladies and gentlemen. And we bring him on for the first time. Uh, Schiller and Mara, uh, Mara and Schiller. Each time he had a different pronunciation. But, <laughs> and we never corrected him. And, the, and if he called Schiller you and over. Mara. If, if, if he called you over, it wasn't necessarily because you did good. It's because these. Uh, your th short routine went too short, and he had to fill in the time. <laughs> That's right. And he said, let's come over. What did you do? Like, what was it like being, uh, uh, what is a Megillah like one day? He called, he asked me, what, you know, a Yiddish word coming out of his mouth. Jerry didn't even I, I, know. I couldn't answer. I mean, that's what. <laughs> and I said, well, it's a long story. And that's what a Megillah is. <laughs> and then an appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show, I mean, the entire country was watching that show on Sunday night. So, because the demographics were different at right. that time. So you guys were uh, become, in, you know, instant nationwide instant. figures by appearing there. Nothing no, is instant, no, Michael. No, 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 Nothing. No, <laughs> no, we, <laughs> no we, did get, uh, uh, we did get something out of what you're saying. 
that was that uh, we started playing clubs. And if we played out in uh, Vegas or Tahoe, Made the circuit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, those people out there were not Jewish or Irish. But we had couples coming up to us saying, we're just like you. I said, what are you talking about? They said, well, he's Chicano and I'm Italian. And we have the same thing you got. They could relate to the content of what we were yeah, saying. So that know. we had a lot of that kind of feedback from people who enjoyed uh, us for no other reason. It was nice. I'm happier today than I was then, though. Why? Because I'm sitting with you and Susan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting with Jerry. I'm happier with Jerry now. <laughs> I am. Why? Did you ever? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> because it's not such a, a, a hazarai. It's not such a fight. We used to work together. I don't care. We, I'm we wrote 81. Every... I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Not everything. You Not can't everything, say everything I know we're on television. You were going to say used to work. No, we, we, we wrote all those sketches. Yeah, of course. So yeah. it, it, how do you hammer out sketches like that with two people trying to find a premise each week if we're going to get on another week? We never know if we're going to be on. So we'd get into these uh, sketches and then we had to go try them out in these different places. Right. And uh, the improv was one. And then the one I always talk about is the night that uh, we went down to a place on, uh, next to the Copa. And it was really kind of a place where you had uh, uh, Lillian Carroll, Joe Barone. No uh, one knows who you're talking about. Yeah, it was a Louis <laughs> Prima uh, bunch of guys. Yeah. And the people loved them. Hey, what the ba ba da bidi da ba da dum da ba That's offensive. You know that? <laughs> so Rodney Dangerfield came by with us because he was our, a little Rodney bit like, was very like, helpful a, to like us. a father figure in a way to two people who, who were already fathers. But the thing is, uh, Rodney was sitting there and I we were sitting there. And uh, suddenly in the bar, we heard a pop. And I didn't know what that was us, because we were getting ready to go on and do our act and try it out, because the next night we were going to do it on Sullivan. Right. And all of a sudden we heard noise, we heard sirens, and somebody came over and said, somebody got murdered in the bar. I said, really? He says, well, it's not too bad. It was his best friend. <laughs> said, okay. Now they're introducing Jerry Stiller here. There's a noise going on. And the guy says, I've got two people I want to introduce you to tonight. What are your names? And Mar Rodney Dageville comes up and grabs my mother. It's a way to talk about two wonderful comedians. Nobody knew that. He gave us was. a great oh. introduction. Yeah. And then we went on stage and we did Hershey and Mary Elizabeth, this yeah. two people who made. There wasn't a single laugh. Not a. <laughs> Not a single laugh. They were still talking were about, the, about the murder. The murder yeah. the Terrible amount so of when it was, over, was given us. I, when it was over, I said, Anne said, how do you think we did? I said, we did great. Why? Because they didn't talk. <laughs> Sometimes you're grateful, like Miss Alma in Summer and Smoke, for little mercies. <laughs> I, I want to ask you, you both separately have had extensive careers as actors uh, uh, right. on stage and, and movies and television. Um, who's the most ambitious of the two of you? Jerry. Oh, I don't know ever the since I stopped, uh, uh, no. the most who was the most? I mean, because I, but don't, I remember don't having seen you first on Ed Sullivan, and I'm then not that you wanted to be. You wanted to as much as I did. When I stopped I stopped. You know, <laughs> isn't that true? <laughs> I got this no is more adventure. You're going to leave that in? <laughs> I don't know. I I always felt that Anne was a laid back person, uh, very talented, very gifted, and did not go out and was aggressive. Mm. Uh, the way you had to knock on doors and go into an office and push yourself. I was no fun to be around, Jerry. I used to yell at you. I took all my angst and, and uh, you know, you guys have angst, don't you? Right. No, we get along famously. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. So you felt though but you I, had to... I, but I always knocked on doors. I knocked on door every door that was available to me. And I, I, I met, I mean, I, 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 you know what, a lot of the agents and a lot of producers they loved the fact that an actor would come. It's not today like you have that. Uh, you go to a secretary and his casting agent. Yeah. You walk in and they say, come on in. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, well, I met Yip Harburg that way. I mean, uh, Yip says, yeah, uh, he hey, is there a role for this guy, Jerry? What's your name, Jerry? Yeah. He says, yeah, come back in a week, whatever. You know, he never came back. <laughs> Some show he was no. doing called Flahooly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you could just, you, you could make the rounds. Yeah. You, I knocked on the door, Mike Todd. You know who he yes. was. Yes. Okay, Taylor, okay. Okay. Yeah. I knock on the door, and the uh, the, the woman the secretary, a very, she looked like an actress who might have been. She said, "What do you do?" I said, "I'm an actor. I'd like to see Mr. Todd. He's not here right now. Would you like a hamburger?" <laughs> I says, "No, no, no. I, I just want to see Mr. Todd." She says, "I'll give you a hamburger." 
I said, uh, I don't want a hamburger. I want to see Mr. Todd. She says, well, uh, uh, you come back again in a couple of weeks. Maybe you'll see him. The next time I knocked on the door was to see the Schubert's because I went to Syracuse University. Yeah, yeah. And my teacher, Sawyer Fork, said to me, if you get to New York, make sure you go to the Schubert office because they came from Syracuse. The boys from Syracuse, they were right. always called. So Lee I JJ. walk in and I, uh, at this, uh, I was working at Needix at the time, the hot dogs. I worked from the <laughs> 9 o'clock to 6 shift, took four <laughs> hours, knocked on the door at the Schubert office. It was right down the street. And I knock on it, and this is very lovely woman, all made up. Her name was Miss Mitzi. And she said, uh, yes. I said, I'm Jerry Still. I'd like to see Mr. L Mr. Schubert. She said, uh, Mr. Lee or Mr. JJ? <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, Mr. Lee. <laughs> she, he, she hits the dictaphone. Uh, Jerry Stiller, see Mr. Lee. Send him right in. <laughs> Walk in, there's Lee Schubert. Now, you know, he was a, not a big man. He was yeah. just, and there's nothing on his desk, just a plain desk and a head. <laughs> and I said to him, Mr. Schubert? And he said, yes. I said, I'm an actor. He said, yes. <laughs> I'm Jerry Stiller. He says, what do you do? I says, I'm a comedian. I'm, I went to Syracuse. Are you working right now? I said, no. He says, when you find work, will you call me? I said, yes. <laughs> and I walked out in the street. I said, they just met Schubert. It <laughs> was successful, right? <laughs> it, was like, it, it was like I had scored. And, and yeah. that gave me an impetus to go on. I, there were a lot of agent stories. There's a lady named, if I may, Lillian Arnold. Lillian Arnold. I want to talk about agents. I want to talk about the theater. Yeah, let talk me, about let the me finish, theater. Let me finish one more. You're next, darling. Yeah, L Lillian Arnold was a very sweet elderly woman who, uh, who, who could elderly. not walk. Elderly? She was younger than we are now. But she <laughs> sat behind a desk, and if you walked in, you told her what you... I just did the clandestine marriage with Freddie Warren uh, down at the... Uh, We've Robinson. all seen the clandestine <laughs> marriage. <laughs> and oh, I, I walked in, and I said... She said, oh, yes, the uh, clandestine marriage. I, uh, I saw the show. And uh, what was it like working with Freddie Warren? And for an hour and a half, I started talking about Freddie Warren, who was a brilliant character actor. And then she said, you know, I see a lot of people in here. And I want to tell you right now, uh, I'll tell you about the person I kicked out of this office. I, I kicked out William Bendix. <laughs> Jack Palance came into this place once, and he wanted work. And I kicked him out. I said, why'd you kick him out? She says, I didn't like his face. <laughs> her career was based on kicking people out That's, of her office. And, and, so. and I says, what about me? She says, well, uh, if you see Freddie Warren, I'll let him know that I loved his work. And that, was <laughs> all, that, was just, that was all I got out of that situation. But you got into the office. Just, just on the comedy, the act that you had, since you guys have been in the comic, comedy business a long time, yeah. was there a point where comedy was changing and the kind of act that you were doing was uh, you know, no longer in demand? Uh, when we was, this is after we'd had an act and everything and we're playing and uh, we made the nightclub circuit I think once, maybe twice, and that each time it would be buoyed by us having been on the uh, Sullivan I you Show. I say booed. That too, uh, yeah. but uh, after being on the Sullivan Show, Cleveland, we were booed. And, um, Milwaukee, why were you we booed? Were, we were booed because they hated us. We stunk. I don't know no, why. No, no, why no. do you boo someone? No, you boo because we couldn't play we, we, we the were, accordion. We were booked in the wrong places. <laughs> we 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 had the the, the most amazing kind of uh, handling, as they say. Oh, blame the booker! Come <laughs> on, I blame you, you don't Cleveland. Go from the, from from the from the Blue Angel. Cleveland sucked into <laughs> the Alpine Village. In Cleveland, oh, or to the Holiday House, not the Holiday Inn in Milwaukee. Milwaukee was no and, picnic and, either. And, <laughs> we uh, had to follow a girl who did like ribald songs or something. We were booked that way. But so the they crowd didn't... was in the outer room. Their 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 slogan was the Holiday House, where every night is New Year's Eve, and sure enough, at midnight, bells and things would go off and. Out there, they'd be doing the limbo. All anxiety. All well, anxiety. We were on in the, the limbo. Main room. <laughs> and we were there, but there was no bathroom backstage. We had to go through the house where the audience is to go to the toilet, El Toiletto. And uh, the, in, in the uh, dressing room were, you know, signs on the wall for people who had yeah, played there. Yeah, there was a Jeroboam there. You know what the size of a Jeroboam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A and, Jeroboam. And above it was this sign on the, uh, what, on the wall saying, Never again, Ella Fitzgerald. Right. <laughs> you they know all why. had unhappy <laughs> situations. <laughs> 
what was the name of that girl who sang those songs? Peggy the Rebel Talks? <laughs> Peggy who? Peggy Lord, her name was. Peggy she had a, Lord, she, had a name she like should Peggy live Lord, and be and well. She, and she did, uh, <laughs> She went oh, all great. Oh, God. But what I was amazed about is, the, is the, your staying power in the business, though, because I, as I asked you earlier, when did you have a sense when comedy was changing, when your kind of comedy... You did ask me that earlier, and I never right. answered. But when, well, when the comics with the four-letter words started coming in, and did, did you have a sense of the change then? We, we, I, 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 uh, I didn't sense the change. I don't think... Uh, I admired those comics a lot. One of the great comics of our time was Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. One of his great lines were, more and more people are leaving religion and coming back to God. I thought it was like a great line. Yeah. And um, we met Lenny what on a couple. What are you saying? More and more people are leaving religion and coming back to God. He said that? He said it. I said it too. I said that no, in the walking. <laughs> 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 we only that? met him a couple of times, <laughs> but we're friends with Kitty Bruce, his uh, daughter, yeah, who was uh, a lovely young we, woman. Uh, technically speaking, the, the vaudeville had died right. when we, we we arrived, and we came. We weren't in, in vaudeville. No, we're we not, weren't. We came, we arrived. Uh, we arrived on the scene as, as when the vaudeville comedians went into nightclubs, right. and this was before Lenny Bruce and all the others who. Uh, came along. We were just doing acts, and there were uh, Jackie Leonard come along, and Jack Carter, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also everybody the, named Jackie. They yeah, were. and uh, 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 the guy from Australia who was uh, 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 Timey Gingery Down. Uh, uh, I remember Ralph him. Harris yeah. was named. Ralph we were Harris on the, and we were not, do. And, and we weren't into the Blue Angel. There was a young kid named uh, uh, Barbara Streisand that yeah. we were on with. Right. Philip. So these At were the Blue all, Angel. These were all, this was beginning. Then after that, and we played with Phyllis, Phyllis Diller. But th at the this, Blue Angel. that's right. We did all that, but you didn't hear four letter words yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lenny Bruce was the beginning of it all. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't put him on. Max uh, Gordon would not put him on at the Blue Angels, which was on Fifty Fourth Street on the east side put them down in the Village Vanguard. They were hypocrites. And he owned both clubs. They were hypocrites. But after that, everybody in started doing four-letter words. Kids were doing it. And Did you guys ever do four-letter no. words? Were you ever tempted to go down that? No. no. Do you have a bleep thing? <laughs> yeah, we have a bleep, we have a bleep thing. thing. We have a bleep thing. What the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> Did you, and you never felt any of that pressure thinking, you know, it's getting a little bluer language? No, because, you know, we were still doing sketches, boy, girl. We right. were boy and a girl then. And we were doing this man, woman stuff that were little playlets. Yeah. And that sure wouldn't have played on Ed Sullivan. No, it you didn't. Know. No. That's and, right. Uh, no, yeah. we never thought of, gee, we got to, you know, uh, make everything a little more modern by saying four little words. And raunchy women were still way ahead. I mean, right, way because ahead that, that was yeah. a man's business mm -hmm. stand yeah. up. Well, I'm sure well, you've interviewed yeah. actor comedians who could tell you, uh, Joan could tell you. Yeah, yeah, Joan Rivers, sure. Yeah, because uh, the, the, yeah, a man can do that, but not a woman. A woman is like a vessel, you know? Tony Fields or something. You yeah. know. Well, no, Tony there was, yeah. There were the real blue peace. ladies, yeah. too. There were, uh, Belle Barth was one, a woman. Belle named, Barth, yeah. Yeah, and we but met that her. that was their profession out in Vegas. They, were, they looked like little grandmothers before they came on stage. They get <laughs> that on was stage, the joke, though, right? Oh, my That's God. That's right. You, what came out of their mouths like a cesspool, you know? That we. <laughs> We Nothing went, you haven't heard at home. No, but it, it shocked you. You really were shocked, you know, to hear this. But they liked us They because we came to Vegas for the first time, and they invited us over to the Caesars Palace, their room, and she had her piano player, and they slept in the same room, the piano player and hub. And they, they said, oi, oi, oi. And before I'm going, she said to me, goyim, goyim. The audience would not choose. They'll never get me. And they were screaming like all these things. Then they went down and they killed. <laughs> <laughs> Filth. And filth always worked. I mean, but I mean, but I... it wasn't for you, filth. No, we couldn't do oh, it. Oh, filth I, it is came, great. I don't know. But we, we never, we, never we had the cojones to yeah, do it. Yeah, but it's, now it's, it's so it's much not that it's we, too much. It's not that we didn't, didn't go it's the It's a route. fine balance, Susan, as you walk the razor's edge of life. <laughs> you got to figure out what is schmutz and what is good. That's all. <laughs> uh, 
uh, we're out of time, but we've only sort of <laughs> we're, we're still in the 1950s and 60s with and you. And we haven't talked about the and theater. And there's a whole theatrical career the ahead. So would you uh, stay and uh, be our guest for next week as Absolutely. well? Part Absolutely. Part two of Stiller and Mira. Sure. Yes. We'll just hang out here a week. Do you mind if I wear the same outfit? Oh, <laughs> all right. I'll right. do so too. <laughs> all right. And Mira, Jerry Stiller, it's been a pleasure. And we will see you, you both next week on Theater Talk for part two of Stiller and, and Mira. And meanwhile, you can catch up with Stiller and Mira at www. Dot Stiller and Mira dot com. www. Dot <laughs> you guys are always Mira. keeping current with the new technology. Well, our son brought us into it. He really uh, came up one day and he says, "Why don't you do this little thing? They're doing this it's thing." It's too on long. The they don't want to hear it now. <laughs> we'll, do it again, <laughs> we'll talk about that guy. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no Thank you. <laughs> do you know that Jerry fought to get my father, Eddie Mira's obituary into the New York Times. That's right, I did. And they said, well, what does your father-in-law do? They needed a, 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 like yeah. a something to And he to, said, well, he babysits. He babysits for our kids. That's right. And they said, that's nothing. Ramey does is that all? No. And finally, they pushed him, and he said, well, yeah, he writes our material. He wrote all my material. He says, well, that got us into the New York Times. And at the wake? Yeah. His friends, his old poker playing buddies said, that Eddie Mira, he never let on. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Eleanor Naylor Dana Charitable Trust, the Alan S. Gordon Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, and the New York State Council on the Arts, a state agency. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you and good night.